I've got a bit of a confession to make. Meow. Up until about a week ago, I have been deathly afraid of the sand. Even I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but sometimes you just gotta face your fears. Let's do it right now. tuning into my YouTube channel. My name is Kenny. Some of you may know me as Kenny Cat. I am a competitive golfer and this channel is dedicated to my journey on what it takes to become a better competitive golfer. All right, let's get right to it. So many of you may have seen my video before where I went over a couple of my stats and I talked about how I was really working to improve my chipping game and as a result, my sand game has started to get a little wonky. I got an email from a viewer out in Norway that was talking to me about how he's struggling with his game. And he asked me the question, like, have I ever struggled with my game or have there been times where I felt like I completely lost my game? Absolutely, yes. There have been many, many, many times where I've struggled with my game. And this is an example of one of those times recently. Now, if you follow my channel for any time, you'll know that I've been working on some short game stuff as it's a really important part of what I've been working for lately. And in the process of doing a grip change, I unintendedly changed a part of my game that was pretty darn good. My sand game used to be so good that I was basically almost at scratch level for a sand player. Getting up and down the bunkers was absolutely no issue whatsoever. But lately, that has all started to change and it's been rather uh, embarrassing to have to admit it. And if I'm honest, I just haven't really been wanting to do anything about it because I've been afraid to admit it to myself and really just didn't want to deal with it. And not wanting to deal with it is a understatement. I was basically just avoiding it altogether. I used all kinds of stat tracking from Arcos and I was very well aware that this was an issue and I just completely ignored it. It even got so bad that I would just use my better iron play and better approach game to just completely avoid sand altogether. And I would just aim intentionally away from the sand and try to hit the littlest piece of green that I could that had no sand near it. Obviously that strategy didn't work out for very long because eventually you'd find yourself in the sand. Now, if you don't know a thing about me, I like to play a lot with uh, random groups of people. Typically you see me show up on the first tee and you know, I hit a three wood 250 yards up down the middle and you know, land on the green, start making pars and I'm even in the first couple of holes through, people start to get the idea of like, oh, okay, he's kind of an okay golfer. He's probably pretty good at this game and he plays a lot and it's fascinating to be around better players and it's always good to like watch them and kind of see what they do. But if you show up to a golf course with a bunch of you know average weekend golfers and you start shooting level par and start scoring birdies, people start to get closer and closer and closer to you. And after a while, they're watching everything you're doing. So there'd be times where I would literally go into the sand from an approach shot and immediately in my mind, I'd be like, oh crap, I'm in the sand. When you're in the sand, it's like a small golf gallery. People are starting to like stare at you and like they're standing four feet from the green. And they're just like, yeah, go ahead, get it out of the sand. Like you've been scoring pars and making birdies. I'm sure you can get this ball out of the sand. Little did they know in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm about to skull this thing 50 feet over the green. So naturally I was very embarrassed to be like, all right, everybody can like everyone please back away from the greens. And can you like turn the other direction? And can you all cover your eyes while I try to work this out over here and just go hacking away in the sand? No one look at me playing in the sand because it's gonna be atrocious and I don't want anybody to know it. And I'm very self-conscious and I don't want to cry and I don't want to talk about my feelings. It's okay, man. We've all been there. So eventually enough was enough. I got tired of feeling sorry for myself and decided that I was going to make some damn changes about it and get this sand thing under control. What I did was I went to the pro shop and bought a brand new box of Pro V1s. I've only got one sleeve left from the box because you might know where this is going. And basically I knew where I had to go. I had to go to Papago because they have a really good practice range there and they have a really good practice sand bunker that's pretty high. And the good thing about Papago range is that they have a great practice facility. Not only was I going to take a brand new box of Pro V1s and drop them into the sand, and any ones that I thinned, I'd no longer be able to get back because they'd be flying halfway across the range. One of two things is going to happen here. I'm either going to make a very big fool of myself at this range, thinning balls out of the sand halfway across the range with a video camera set up like I know what I'm doing, or I'm going to get over my stuff and I'm going to figure this thing out. So I get to the range and I, you know, get my camera set up and I've got everything set up in the corner here and proceed to start basically uh, sculling balls across the practice range and over into the driving range. 
And it's as clear as day that I am on the struggle bus in this bunker over here. It was also 110 or 109 degrees this day, so it was hotter than heck. My iPhone kept shutting off uh, because it was so darn hot, but I just stayed dedicated to the process. I knew that there was nothing wrong with me. I knew that I have good skills and I can figure my way out of this and I can just work this out and get a good feel that's gonna make me feel confident out of the bunkers. So I hacked the way through the sand for about 45 minutes to an hour or so, just spinning different balls, fatting them out of the bunker, and just working at it religiously, trying to find my mojo back and trying to get my sand swagger back. And this is golf progress. Like sometimes you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta lose your way and you gotta find your way back. And a lot of it looked just like this. Just barely getting balls out of the bunkers, thinning them over the green, fattening them in there, just just having a having a having just a really rough go at it. So I spent my time going through the bunker and just trying to get my you know, trying to get my swing back. And some shots were working, others were not, but just consistently going through the process, taking my time, and at a certain point I just stopped caring what anybody thought about what I was doing over there because People got enough stuff to worry about in their own golf game. They're not really worried about what I'm doing. And eventually I started to get a hang of it. Real quick, just wanna interject here. So the reason I'm acting completely ridiculously scared right now is because there was a bee that was basically in this bunker with me and flying towards me. Two or three weeks ago, I was playing golf and I ended up getting attacked by a swarm of Africanized killer bees and I was stung like 15 to 20 times. So needless to say, not a fan of bees at all. Back to the story. But like many things golf related, I think that we make this a lot more complicated than it has to be. And ultimately, after somewhere close to about an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes of hacking away in the sand, I was finally able to get my sand mojo back. And eventually the shot started looking really, really good. production. My faith in you. Fast forward into a couple of rounds later, I ended up shooting a very low round and ended up having a very good sand score. And needless to say, my confidence in the sand is 100% back. I thought it'd be a good idea to make this video because his email really resonated with me and he sounded like he was in a place where I was at before where, you know, his strike is not going exactly where he wants to and this part of the game isn't working. And I know oftentimes when I make these videos, I seem very chipper and extremely happy about what's going on, but that isn't always the picture of what's going on in my game. There are a lot of things that I'm gonna continually have to work on to improve. There are areas of my game that I would love to see get better, but the ultimate reality is I just have to be honest with myself about where I am with my current skill set deal with what I have in front of me, and then work to the best of my ability to make it better and improve upon it. And ultimately, what we learn is going to be those bad shots that we hit. Going to the range and doing easy shots and hitting shots that you can hit doesn't really teach us much of anything. Sometimes, you just gotta dig it out of the dirt, or in this case, the sand. <laughs> Needless to say, after all of that, I, I genuinely only have one sleeve of, of Pro Wines left. Like, I also think this is a really good way for me to have to focus and put stress on myself to hit good shots. I'd love to hear from some of you down that lens. Have you been struggling with anything in your game? Has Sam been giving you trouble? Is there a part of your game that you're afraid to admit that is really bad, but that you know you can do better if you just focus on improving it? Let me know in that comment section below. I would love to hear from you all. As always, thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel. Deuces, people. Let's keep it moving.